These are called electromyographic signals. The signals are picked up by electrodes planted on the skin. Uh, the electrodes basically look like this. They're tiny little pads, much like you have in a doctor's office. So if she said the future out loud... The future? We have the signal that's corresponding to that muscular activity. But with subvocal speech, she doesn't have to move her mouth. She could say that word silently. So if she would say the future silently... Here she said the future, but she didn't move her lips. And you can see that there is still the same signal being picked up by the electrodes underneath her throat. Once the electrodes capture the signal, they can be transmitted, as if through a cell phone, to someone with an earpiece receiver. In Chicago, Illinois, a world authority on microwave hearing shows how it could work. I'm hearing a microwave pulse like a click. Now it sounds like a, a chirp with a tonal quality to it. Professor James Lin is hearing sounds that aren't there, but he's not crazy. Pulses of microwave energy are being generated and fired at him from behind. Microwaves can be heard depending on the individual, uh, depending on the hearing acu acuity of the individual. Individuals with uh, fairly normal hearing can hear microwaves at a quite a low level. The energy of the absorbed microwaves causes brain tissue to very slightly heat up and expand, causing a pressure wave to be picked up by the hearing mechanism in the inner ear. Professor Lin is far from hearing voices, but it could be possible to send coded signals to an agent this way. Brain is an electrical organ. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to electrical signals. Since the microwave is electrical, therefore, in principle, one could uh, embed or encode information in the microwave signal.